Hello and welcome everybody, it's Karen. I'm glad you stopped by because today I am playing with acetate cards and cover plate dies and a border die or two, I believe. Now, if you did see my more recent, um, or one of my more recent videos about using scraps, this may seem very familiar. Now, I'm going to be using this Halifax cover plate die for my first couple of cards because it's probably the most complex, but it's not that hard to do as you'll see. Uh, but use whatever you have in your stash. Go through your cover plate dies and see what you have that you would like to try this technique on. Uh, and it's really very simple. So let's get started. So I've got a sheet of acetate that is five and a half inches by 11 inches wide. Now I'm using eight mil acetate. So this is really quite thick acetate that I'm using. And I think you want it to be thick for the card to stand up. I'm using an embossing stylus to just score that in half at the five and a half inch mark. So that's giving me a five and a half inch square card. Now I do cut this one down, but I wanted to start with that. I wasn't entirely sure what I was going to do. And I've got the frame, that cover plate die cuts out a frame, which is really nice. But if you don't have a frame, you can use the die itself. And all I'm doing here is I am centering this uh, frame inside my acetate card and just taping it in place and so then I will use that as my template for how to position all my pieces. So that could be your die if it doesn't your die doesn't cut a frame. Now this is my little tip if you're going to do a lot of gluing and I have a needle nose glue bottle I wet a baby wipe and then all I do is I stick that in there and it keeps it nice and moist and I think that's actually my pixie spray lid. <laughs> So you can see here, I am now gluing directly onto the front of the acetate. I have all those little pieces and I know you're probably going looking at that and going, oh, that's too much work. And I sort of wondered that myself <laughs> when I sat down to do this. But honestly, this took me less than 20 minutes to put all these pieces in. And I ended up doing two of these. So what I did is I did it sort of section by section. I put a glued up quite a number of spots before I stopped adding glue but the glue doesn't dry very quickly on the acetate so you do have quite a bit of wiggle room and time to sort of get everything lined up and in this with this die all those pieces they're all exactly the same so it doesn't matter where they go you just need to put the the right pieces together so once I had a, a little section done I used my acrylic block uh, and just let it set up under that and so now I can remove that uh, cover plate on the inside. Now you can see there's quite a few little hairs that are left on there. So now that the glue has really dried, I'm just going to take my spellbinders, I think they call that a tool in one, and I just rub over that and all those little hairy bits start to come off. But just make sure your glue is dry before you do that. Now there you can see I've got some glue I've messed up with and all you need is some isopropyl alcohol or rubbing alcohol. And I'm just using a Q-tip to get in between those little lines and it will come off. Now I'm going to color this up after the fact and you can also do this. So I'm using Catherine Pooler inks and they are dye inks. So you can see I'm going right over the acetate and you can see it's gone on the acetate. But all I did is I took a, a dry paper towel and I went over it and you can see it comes off the acetate. And there it is after I've done that. So you don't have to pre-color your, your pieces if you don't want to. Now I've got a little uh, flap card, I guess I'll call that, that goes on the inside. It was four and three quarter inches by seven inches and I just scored it at the three and a half along the seven inch side. And it fits perfectly inside those die cut pieces. And I really like that Betty's Garden, the dark, um, you know, background paper behind the, these die cuts. So I thought I'd put that in just to show you there's lots of things you can do behind these. So I'm taping it down now over, over the colored sections on the front of the acetate and adding my glue now to the back of the flap card. And then I'm just folding the acetate down over it, sort of pressing to make sure that glue gets picked up. And you can see it's under an acrylic block. And then I'm just adding a second piece that is exactly the same size. So four and three quarter inches by three and a half. And that will fit right over the back so you don't see the glue through there. 
and it gives you somewhere to stamp your your stamp made by whoever so so here's a second idea so here I'm using some of the rainbow poppy paper and I'm trimming this down as you can see to four inches because I will need a half an inch flap for this so this one is going vertically the other one went horizontally and I thought I would do a vertical one so I'm going to score this now a half an inch in and that will give me somewhere to attach my other piece of card which you can see I'm holding up right there so it's three and a half inches wide and I'm just making sure I've got it all the right size and then I can add some double-sided adhesive tape to that that fold line and then attach the uh, white piece of card to that and so once that's lined up then I can fold that over and burnish it and that will be my inside flap card going vertically this time. So you can see it's all lined up against those little die cuts and I'm just taping it down. Now I had it taped completely in place and I'm just moving that tape now so it only covers up the, the front of that flat card. And then again, just like the last time, I'll add glue to the back, sort of hold it in place and then push the acetate flap down over it. And then I'm going to attach a second piece over top of that to hide that seam and the glue. Now those little flowers on the right, I kept those and I've actually uh, fussy cut those out. So you'll see those in just a minute. Okay, now my mission this year is to declutter my craft room. I have got so much stuff that, well, these were just drying out completely. And so I've added those to the square sections. Now here's the Hel the Betty's Garden um, card all finished. You can see I've just added some die cuts and that sentiment was actually out of the die cut um, pack. So I thought that went really quite well with the black in behind. And here's this one. You can see I fussy cut those poppies and I've added those in. I've added some of the little etched butterflies. That is such a great die set, you guys. If, if you ever need butterflies, that's a really nice one because they're nice and small. Now you could have put something on the front on that orangey section, I just didn't. Now here's an idea of how to use up some of your scraps. I am using scraps from that watercolor sublime paper pack there. And I've got the paper piece rectangle die. This die in particular is really good for this technique. So I've got all these scraps that, you know, I don't know what I normally would do with those. So I'm using them up on this card. And I've added in a couple of pieces from the rainbow twirl paper. So all I'm doing is I'm sort of looking at the front of that and seeing which colors I want to go where. And then I, I just use the low tack tape and tape them in place. And you can see I trim off the papers uh, just so they're not in the way of the next section. Uh, and then take these on. And I added in now that rainbow twirl piece of paper. I'd already die cut from that and I'd made another card with it. So I had this piece left over and I just thought it went well. And so once I get, you know, part of this filled, I trimmed off the excess and I've die cut that and I've added more uh, low tack tape to the back of those pieces just so I could see what other colors I was adding in and where they would go. Now just make sure you check the back before you actually die cut it because as you can see that piece there wasn't going to cut all the way so I had to move that one over a little bit more. And then before I ran that through my die cutting machine I removed the bottom pieces that I had already die cut because well with my luck I would they wouldn't be lined up and I would have to recut. <laughs> So there they are all cut out and I've put them on a sticky mat. I used that frame to sort of piece them together and I thought I would stencil over this. So I've got the big drop stencil here and I'm going to use those same Nouveau glitter drops. <laughs> Honestly I had to unplug this bottle before I could even use it. There was a big dried up mess on the end of it so really I need to use this. So I'm just putting a big puddle down on my craft mat and going over with a palette knife over that stencil. And then I did take my stencil off and wash it right away. I also moved those pieces off and cleaned off my mat right away. Now here's the interesting thing. My stencil had something sticky on the back. I had 
done the pixie spray, but I think there was a glitter of some kind and it stuck to my paper. So when I pulled my paper off, you can see the white there. It sort of has a marbled look and I love that. I thought that was a real plus. So <laughs> yours may not do that. But that was what happened to mine. So if you're wondering, that's what it was. So again, this piece, this die can go horizontally, vertically, whichever way you want it to go. And exactly the same as the last time, I've pieced the frame inside and taped it down and I'm just gluing over top. And I've cut out that little peekaboo window on this one. So I just cut that one section and I left that because I wanted to put this little butterfly in, but it could just as easily be a sentiment or a heart or a bird, whatever you've got. So I just thought that was kind of fun. And so now I've put in my card on the back and I did go back in and put white pieces of cardstock over the, the other, over the front section. Okay, so here I am making some butterflies. Now I'm using scraps again. I've just cut this, I think it's called the Alana butterfly. I will list everything down below. Uh, and while that glue is wet, I just take my scissors and cut around it. I sort of get my scissors under the black frame and cut that out. So there you can see there's a, a pretty little butterfly from scrap cardstock. Now because that's going on the acetate, I cut a second black butterfly and I'm just going to glue that right over the front. So when you see it from the back, it'll at least look more like a butterfly. And then I just took a Copic marker, I think that was blue green 13, and I'm just flicking on a bit of color just near the body, nothing fancy, just to deepen up the shade there. And then that butterfly has those two circles, so of course I put some gems in those. And so there you can see a few butterflies made. Now that's the finished card. I added some leaves to the top there and those three butterflies, the hello. You do see through to that, but it doesn't bother me. So I think if it bothered you, put cover them with white from the back. And that's the inside. I've just added the butterfly and some flowers. And I just, I love that marbled look that, <laughs> that I accidentally got with that paper. Okay, now I have to apologize for this one because my camera battery died while I was filming and I lost a lot of footage, but I'm using the rainbow twirl paper. And again, I've got a five and a half inch wide piece of acetate by 11 inches. Uh, I didn't end up using this piece on this, on this card. I, I have just used the wreath piece and the pinky piece. Now I'm covering the top of my acetate card again, and I'm just sort of positioning it over that wreath. I had such a hard time cutting this wreath, it's so pretty. So I just penciled in exactly where I was going to cut it, and then I lost my footage. <laughs> so this is the card. Now to cut the wreath, I used just this outline of this uh, layered pin, or yeah, layered pinwheel die. Uh, and I cut that, and I also cut a green, greeny blue section from that wreath. The middle one, I used the Slimline Hearts border die, as you can see there, and I just used that along the edge, and it sort of gave a nice wavy look. Those are the Elodi uh, flower builder dies, or flowers, and I thought they matched the flowers on the rainbow twirl paper quite well, so I just used those, and I did add in flower stamens to the center of them. And again, those are the little etched butterflies. You get all these butterflies in the set. That's such a great investment, I think. So on the back now, I have not covered that. I quite liked those papers together, but you do see the glue. So if that bothers you, I would just cover those with white scraps. Now I embossed this side of the flap on this one um, using that hand stitching to embossing folder. And I've added in the Celebrate. I just uh, made sure it was hidden in behind that middle layer when I went to glue it down. And then on the inside of that, I've just added a flower and one more of the little etched butterflies. So thanks for joining me, everybody. I hope I've given you some inspiration to get out some acetate and your die cuts and your scraps and your pattern papers. These make really fun, easy cards. Thanks for stopping by and I hope you're having a great day.